Nearly 100 years ago, our nation joined the ongoing war in Europe in what came to be known as the Great War. Amongst those mobilized and deployed were thousands of National Guard troops. Not unlike today, most were young and patriotic. Many were killed and wounded. Among those serving were chaplains. And this is the story of one of those chaplains, Father Francis Duffy of New York City. Mustered from amongst the many faith groups that characterize the towns and cities of America, National Guard chaplains provided spiritual care and comfort to their troops, many of whom were their neighbors. Father Duffy is my personal hero, and I want this story to be told because it tells who we are, what we're about, and what we should be doing as chaplains. He left his parish, he went with his troops, he cared for them, he gave them hope, he returned to his parish and began his civilian ministry while engaging his guard ministry as well back home, just like we do today. The traditional model of National Guard chaplaincy involves local clergy who live and serve alongside their people and, in time of military necessity, deploy. This is a tradition that goes way back to the beginnings of our nation's history. I'm standing in the middle of the city cemetery in downtown Hartford, Connecticut. Around me are skyscrapers, and the state capitol is just a short distance behind me. But nearly 400 years ago, this was the edge of the frontier. And the Reverend Samuel Stone, a clergy person who had only recently immigrated here from England, came to this remote outpost to become the community's first pastor. His name is embossed on this memorial stone among other city leaders. In 1637, the colony raised up a militia to fight in what later became known as the Pequot War. Samuel Stone petitioned the governor to join the militia, not as a combatant, but as a pastor providing spiritual care and leadership to the militia members. He then could arguably be considered the first militia or National Guard chaplain to ever serve our nation. This statue was erected in 1999 to honor his service to the Hartford community. This model of ministry served our nation well during the colonial period and the later Revolutionary War. A century later, during the Civil War, ministers on both sides of the conflict volunteered to serve as chaplains. This gathering of Civil War chaplains depicts both commissioned officers and volunteer chaplains. This photograph of a Union worship service is the earliest known photo of a chaplain providing pastoral ministry. But whether formal or informal, the ministry provided by these chaplains was necessary and crucial as the trauma and horror of combat places great stress on a soldier's soul. One of the quotes that I try to keep in mind is, war is hell. It's, it's the unknown. Life and death happens very, very quickly. Uh, things can turn on a moment. It's, it can be very indiscriminate. It's easy for us to become evil in an environment like that. One of the things that we have to do in this very violent and ugly, hell-like atmosphere is to remind the people of the sacred. That there is sanctity to life. That there's all life is, is a sacred gift. And that we have no right to take it indiscriminately. 
and chaplains help to remind us that there's a righteous calling to what we do. At the turn of the 20th century, New York City was booming and growing. And Father Francis Duffy was assigned to a brand new parish in the Bronx, which was meeting in a storefront. The parish grew and expanded, due in part to his forceful but pleasant personality. I think Father Duffy was bigger than life. He was six feet four inches tall. He was kind of thin and gaunt. Uh, and he, he wore those, you know, flowing robes in, in, in its parishes, you know, either uh, in Times Square at uh, Holy Cross or up in, at Our Saviors in the, in the Bronx, which he started uh, from a bookstore. While Bill Donovan, who eventually became the commanding officer, said his intellect, his intellect was so extraordinary and he was such an earthy person that everybody could identify with him and feel, you know, feel his inner strength. Typical of parish priest, Father Duffy tended to the needs of his parish families and his community. He was later assigned to Holy Cross Church on 42nd Street, just off of Times Square. Father Duffy was uh, not just a great uh, parish priest, he was also a great innovator too, in terms of how he uh, you know, ran his parish. And you know, one of the things, when the families would come, he created a daycare center, which was one of like the first daycare centers uh, that people know about. And he realized that if you could check an umbrella, you can check a child. It was during this time that Father Duffy joined the famous Fighting 69th, a National Guard regiment. Made up mostly of Irish Catholics, the 69th had a storied reputation and included such notables as Bill Donovan, later considered the father of the CIA, and the poet Joyce Kilmer, best known for his poem, Trees. The armory that he drilled in on Lexington Avenue is still in use today. It was designed so that you could use cavalry in, in the city, and they would bring their guns here and their, all their, their wagons and everything would be right here on the drill floor. And, but this is a place that, it, that has uh, mustered soldiers out for over 100 years. They went out to World War I, they went out to World War II, they went out to Korea, they went out to Vietnam from here. We've mustered time and time again from, from this armory. And I think Father Duffy set a precedent here that has driven this organization throughout its history. There's a uh, esprit de corps here, a sense of faith, a sense of destiny, a sense of purpose. I think that was primarily because of Father Duffy. The post-Civil War Industrial Revolution of the late 19th century which provided efficiencies in factories, also provided efficiencies in combat. It allowed warfare to be carried out in a deadly fashion such as the world had never known. Casualties were extreme. On one July day in 1916, nearly 20,000 British troops were killed in the Battle of the Somme. Of all the U.S. regiments, the 69th Infantry suffered some of the highest casualties. Of approximately 3,500 members, nearly 850 were killed. As one can imagine, the ministry needs were incredible. Yet Father Duffy and other chaplains just like him risked their lives for their soldiers. I love my country. I love what I do. I love my faith. And I consider it a great honor uh, for me to be following in the footsteps of uh, a man, a great man of sacrifice, a great priest, and Father, Father Duffy. Father Duffy did not love war. His soul went out to the men who had to fight it. Duffy would go up and comfort some of these dying soldiers on the battlefield, and it just so affected them. 
that uh, he was seen weeping on the, on the battlefield. And at one time, he held the hand of two brothers as they were dying, and he gave them last rites on the battlefield. He knew these people that he was giving last rites to and caring for spiritually. He knew the wounded that he was praying for. He deployed with them. He was present. He cared deeply for his troops, and he always gave them hope. Even in the midst of death, Father Duffy, from his theology, preached about the hope of eternal life. The point is, he was always there with them. He ate with his soldiers, he slept with his soldiers, and yet he also was clearly an officer. The other officers recognized that he was one of them, so he was able to bridge that gap very easily. He was at home with every rank. One of the attributes that a military chaplain must have that sets him apart from all other ministries is that a military chaplain must be willing to perform or provide religious support for soldiers regardless of their denominational background or their faith group. While Father Duffy ministered in difficult and dangerous circumstances, he did not minister alone. He served alongside other chaplains and was himself aided by chaplain assistants. We know that Chaplain Duffy had a chaplain assistant. He refers to him at, at times as his orderly. As chaplain assistants, we join in with the, with the chaplains and share that same goal, taking care of the warfighter. That's what the Chaplain Corps is all about. We're there to serve God and we serve others and we forget about ourselves. We put our personal life, our personal agendas aside so we can be everything that we need to be to help that soldier, that, that man or woman in the armed forces, whether it's an airman, a sailor, whoever it may be, we're there. These soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and Coasties of all ranks and all faiths need spiritual care. They need guidance and support. So in that sense, little has changed for chaplains since Father Duffy deployed with his troops. When the war ended, Father Duffy returned and was later assigned to Holy Cross Church on 42nd Street, just off of Times Square. During the decade of the 20s, his ministry impact spread throughout the city and included many of the returning veterans and family members of those who had been killed in the war. He published a diary of his wartime experiences and later, after his death, he was featured in a Hollywood movie starring James Cagney and Pat O'Brien as Father Duffy. More recently, a book about his life was published entitled Duffy's War by the historian Stephen Harris. In 1932, when Father Duffy died, the whole city mourned. His funeral was one of the largest in the city's history. Mourners spilled out of St. Patrick's Cathedral on the Fifth Avenue. Later in 1937, the city of New York commemorated his service by erecting a statue of him in Times Square and designating the area as Duffy Square. It is amazing what this man was able to do. That's who we are as chaplains. That's what we're about. Presence with our people wherever they're at, caring for our people, and giving hope. Then as now, our calling is to care for the living, provide comfort for the suffering, and honor the dead. In reality, few of us will ever have a statue erected in our honor. Few of us will ever serve with the notoriety or fame of a Father Duffy. But we can all serve faithfully and honorably as National Guard chaplains, 
serving both our congregations and our country. That is our divine calling. <laughs>